Well, a warm welcome to the History Show here on Uxbridge FM. And Ken Pierce is back for another History Talk. This first one today, Gillies the Cutler in Uxbridge. When you're ready, Ken. Right, thank you very much. Yes, I don't think there are any cutlers in Uxbridge today. Um, a cutler is someone who makes instruments that cut, basically. <laughs> And um, we we had uh, a family in Uxbridge for several generations, and they they appeared in the town. And um, William Gillis uh, appeared in the, the town. He'd come from Sheffield, which of course was always been noted for steel, uh, from which uh, cutting instruments are made. He he came to the town and took up a, a business which had been run by a relation, and had a shop in Windsor Street, opposite the old burial ground. And William Gillis made principally knives and razors. Of course, in those days, before electricity, many men had the old cutthroat razor, uh, which was one of uh, Gillis' implements. But he also sharpened scissors and all kinds of other tools. Uh, the family uh, had another branch in London, actually, in Marleburn. By 1861, uh, William Gillies had moved into the High Street, settling eventually in premises roughly opposite the end of Johnson's Yard. The main feature of his shop window was a large knife with 366 blades. I don't know whether you can picture it. It's very difficult. It doesn't look like a knife at all. Um, and, and, of course, it it was fairly useless. You know, you, you couldn't really manhandle this quite large object. But there we are. It, it must have been made as an exhibition piece, I think, uh, with one blade uh, for every day of the year, even the leap year. In 1878, someone wrote a long poem about every shop in the high street. And one verse read, At Gillies I bought a new knife. Not from him, I believe, was his wife. She knows well her trade. As she opened the blade, said, My dear, it will last you your life. Apparently, Mrs Gillies told everybody, My dear, which is... Uh, part of the point of this little verse. On one occasion, William Gillies admitted that his craftsmanship was bad for business because his knives were so good that many people never had to buy another one. William's grandson, William Frederick Gillies, helped him in the business and eventually took over when he died in 1904. The younger Gillies then ran the shop until he also retired, and that was in 1954. By that time, it was the only high street shop where wooden shutters were put up over the windows at closing time. The premises were then let to Kirby Brothers, the DIY firm, and they were able eventually to buy the site when William Gillies died in 1958. And there they discovered, in the shop, the many-bladed knife that he had left behind. So, generously, the Kirbys donated it to the borough. And this curiosity is occasionally put on display. <laughs> I've never seen that, have you? Well, yes, but it's like so many other things in Uxbridge. We await a museum to put them in. So the, the, it has occasionally been brought out for a display, but otherwise it just sits in the store. Okay, thanks. It must, it, must, it must be hard for you to imagine it, actually. <laughs> it's not exactly a pocket knife, I imagine. Not exactly, no. <laughs> Right, stay with us because there's more Ken coming up 